Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Private Property Farming Podcast. My name is Mbali Nwoko, and I'm happy to be back onto the podcast once again, introducing yet another entrepreneur, agripreneur, or farmer just in the agri sector. And today we're speaking to uh, a fellow female farmer. As you know, I'm always biased to female farmers because I think we need to have a lot more female farmers in this industry. And uh, it's always great to engage with another female farmer just to understand their journey and um, how they're making success in this industry. And today's topic is all about is agriculture the answer in, cre in, in solving the, the unemployment issue around youth in our country? And um, the lady we're going to be speaking to, and her name is Norma Tamba, just by the way, uh, she's going to just unpack this topic with us, share a little bit of our story, and uh, maybe just dive into some critical issues on how we can solve the youth unemployment crisis in South Africa. So joined um, by me today is Noma Temba Sibanda, and she's, the far she's a farmer and founder of NISC Farms based in Pretoria. If you have any questions for her, please feel free to comment, like, and share uh, this podcast if you find it valuable. And obviously, share it not only to individuals that have a keen interest in agri, but also share it to your social media so that we could spread the word around the wonderful things that young people are doing in the space, the solutions uh, that we are coming up with just to curb certain challenges that exist in the industry and always always subscribe to this farming podcast right here on the private property youtube channel let's welcome noma temba how are you doing hi 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 everyone <laughs> hi um, thank you so much Mbali, to you and your team for reaching out and for having me today um yeah and uh, it's, it's really exciting that we've got platforms like this um you know where we could come out and actually talk about our journeys and talk about mm. you know the challenges we face or some of um, you know, the things that we actually need as youth, like you said, is youth uh, in agriculture the actual uh, answer to unemployment? And I think, yeah. I think yes, you know, and we'll discuss more in detail, um, you know, um, you know as, as, as the podcast goes along. Absolutely. So before we get into the crux of the show and discussing all these uh, 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 important topics around youth unemployment, maybe just tell us about uh, who you are, NISC Farms, um, just so that we could understand your background uh, in brief. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm a, um, I'd like to say small-scale farmer, really, um, based in Pretoria. Um, I'm a mixed farmer. I do both crop as well as um, um, I'm livestock, um, poultry farming, really. Um, in terms of livestock, I just have a couple of goats um, that I'm using just to learn how to rear and raise goats. Um, in fact, um, I had one of my goats have twins a couple of months ago. It was a very exciting moment for me. But, you know, my big business drivers is, is my poultry, um, you know, broilers to be specific, as well as crops. I do kale, um, spinach, and mustard spinach for now. Um, and, and, yeah, so that's basically what I do. Um, I'm 30 years old. It's my birthday today. <laughs> oh. um, and, uh, um, yeah, just a mixed, small-scale farmer based in Pretoria North. Wow. Well, firstly, happy birthday. How are you going to celebrate your birthday? <laughs> well, there's a fire outside. You know how we farmers do it. Cold yeah. branding, cold dry. I've got a three-month-old daughter, so I really can't do much. Uh, but we're just here on the farm, yeah. Oh, well, happy birthday for myself and the private property team. So you studied uh, marketing as well as corporate management, which is very different to agriculture. How did you find yourself in, 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 in the agri-sector? So I guess, you know, I, I kind of, I can't say I stumbled upon agriculture because, you know, first of all, I'm a second generation of farmer. My dad is a farmer, um, but not in a million years did I ever picture myself as a farmer growing up. It's crazy. It came to me almost like, you know, just like that, like a, a light bulb moment that just told me, aha, go into farming. And I love it. I've been loving it. Um, like I said, I was raised by a farmer. 2020, I lost my job. I actually used to be a software sales executive in a very, very big company in Santon, had, you know, the picket fence, nice house, nice car, nice everything, and then COVID hit. And um, I took a voluntary retrenchment. It was either pay cut or to retrenchment. I decided, you know what, I'm actually done, and I'm going to pursue my farming dream. Took my retrenchment package, and that was it, and I was off. And that is two years ago, three years ago, um, and, and I've been farming ever since. But of course, farming is not something that is new to me. I was raised 
uh, by auctions and uh, the selling of sale of pigs and the cows. Uh, my dad is a farmer. He does cattle mostly, livestock and cattle. He doesn't really do horticulture. Um, yeah, so that's how I got into farming. I got a trench in 2020 and I decided I'm not going to work for anyone anymore and I'm literally going to farm. Yeah. And that's right. Yeah, well, kudos to you for taking the leap of faith and obviously uh, deciding that you're going to farm because you could have taken that retention package and done something else, you know, started a property business um, mm. or, you know, anything else that uh, is in line with your passion. So now 2020, we are in 2022. Um, you're running this farm, like you said, um, with, with your father, you know, your second generational farmer. Do you think it's easier running it with a family member as opposed to running it yourself? How's your experience been uh, uh, since you started managing the farm with, with a partner? So, uh, unfortunately, my dad is not, uh, you know, he's not in the country. So we're running independently. So I've, I've been doing this before. But with these guidance, constant nagging all the time, you know, so I'm practically running it. I'm doing it on my own. Um, you know, I really wish my dad was here. <laughs> I think things would be so much easier. Things would be so much better. All the mistakes I've made, I wouldn't have made them because, you know, I feel like farming is, 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 is something that we can talk about all day, but until you actually get into the field and experience it day by day by day, it's when you actually learn that there's intricacies within farming that we, you know, we can, we can never, ever, ever, ever know until you actually experience it. So, mm. I mean, it's, it's, it's been challenging. I've made a lot of mistakes, lots and lots of mistakes, because of course, I mean, my background is not really agriculture. I didn't study it, remember? Mm. Um, and I've just been working, learning from my dad and what I've seen growing up. Um, mm. So I've made a lot of mistakes. I've learned a lot from a lot of my mistakes. Um, I've made financial mistakes that have cost me lots and lots of money. And, and of course, of course, I mean, there's external factors that really we can't control, that mm. uh, we can't control. It has every single day that we're never ready for. I know last year my crops got hit by frost and I lost my entire fields, all of them. Mm. And I know I could never get me ready for something like that. But you know, I'm stronger this year, I'm wiser, mm. I know exactly what I need to do. You know, I know how I prevent this, prevent that. So I guess it's, it's been a very long um, journey, a learning journey. The past two years have been an eye opener to me, but I'm not mm. giving up, I'm still here. Yeah, what type of crops were you uh, farming, uh, especially those that were hit by crop uh, frost? So I had I had kale, right? Um, I had kale, literally kale yeah. everywhere, and it was for a customer. It was they had an order, <laughs> yeah. and just before I think it was a week before I was going to harvest, and I got hit by by frost, wow. and I had to really sell it in formal market. But I did try and recover something, you know. You know, you know. I guess you know farming is you have to kind of take it with its strides, like yeah. learn as you go learned to recover and bounce back very quickly or else you're going to fall flat on your face so of course as soon as i knew it wasn't you know that you know my particular customer was not going to buy that i had to think on my feet in formal market the guys that buy bundles they were okay to take the the, the, the care off of me mm. um yeah, challenging. <laughs> yeah well you know what i think no farmer is a farmer until they're affected by frost, uh, as, yeah. especially from a crop perspective. And no farmer is a farmer until they're affected by a disease uh, where yeah. livestock is, con is concerned. But you did say that you have a bit of live sp uh, livestock on the farm, piggery and cattle. Um, where are you selling the livestock from? Is it direct offtakes or are you selling through live auctions? Um, so right now, I don't have, I'm not in piggery. It's my dad that's in piggery and, yes. and cows. I do broilers so i do half or half and half um so it's off takes as well as i've got some informal um customers so i've got some really really good informal customers that i've been working with since the beginning of my farming journey and they come and pick up chickens almost on a weekly basis so um and and of course um because you don't want to i guess the, the, the gripe is a small scale farmer is getting into the retail space rather the form, formal off take agreements when it comes to things like you know um your poultry because of course the regulations and all of that and all of that so i guess that's why most of us run to the informal market um but then i found a spa that and roots you know just a couple of of, of to name a few of my customers mm. that were ready to eat the cakes but yeah you know yeah. It's, it's been a really interesting journey yeah you know when i hear you talk no matter i'm just thinking like Sure, you started this farming journey because you were retrenched and now yeah. you are an employer today, yeah. you know, and yeah. obviously you must be passionate about creating employment because I can just see the passion exuding off of you as you speak about farming. 
over and above all mm. the mistakes and the challenges that you've um, you've uh, you were faced with, you know, since you started your journey. So let's talk about that employer-employee relationship. Now you're an employer, you're creating employment. Um, how many people are you managing on the farm? Or are you employing? What does it look like from a gender perspective? Is it mostly male? Is it mostly female? Do you also have young uh, young employees uh, on your farm? What's that relationship like now being the boss lady? <laughs> So it's very interesting, right? Because, I mean, this is a very, I don't know if I still like to call it a male-dominated industry. So in the beginning, I was finding it very difficult to get, you know, respect across from my employees because I'm generally a very nice person. I'm always laughing, you know. And of course, when I'm a bit mad, I'm, you know, I'm serious. But yeah. I'll still say it in a nice way. And then I had to learn, you know, how to balance, you know, to say, listen, you have to be a stern boss and you have to be strict. Or else things are not going to get done on the farm. But in terms of, I've got about, um, how many, I've got four permanent employees. And um, depending, for example, I'm planting next week, I'm going to get another five, 10. So I've got about five or six people that are, are on a temporary basis that I call every single time when there's a project um, or heavy lifting that needs to be done, particularly on the field. So when we're weeding, um, when we're planting, um, and, and et cetera, or applying fertilizer and all of that stuff. So. Um, but other than that, I just have four people here, and it's, it's pretty balanced. It's just it's, it's actually two males and two females. In the beginning, I had four guys, <laughs> and then I tried to balance that out a little bit, and I started getting you know um, you know some ladies to come and help out. And with the five temp the ladies that come, they are like five females. So yeah, um, I am looking to actually empower some more and more people as I grow. And I'm also not using all the space that I'm on. So as yeah. I grow as myself. Um, I'm looking to empower and employ more and more, um, you know, youth, especially female youth. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do you find that now that you've started your farm, especially with the workers that are working on your farm, are they saying that, you know, we should bring more young people? Do you, uh, and also with family members, you know, since they found out that you're farming, uh, what's the interest like, especially from the younger generation? Um, do, are they surprised at this career um, switch, you know, that you've decided to take? And um, are they advocating more young people to get into the industry? Yeah. So I think the first thing is, is that everyone is always shocked. Like, how do you, how did you do it to your girl? You know, you're female. Why? You'd rather prefer playing mud as opposed to, you know, doing your nails. You know, I used to do my nails almost every week, you know, do my hair, you know, and all of that stuff. And, 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 and I think they, 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 they more, farming is almost becoming fashionable, believe it or not. Mm. And, and, you know, a lot of the youth, a lot of these young people are getting, are gravitating towards farming and agriculture and they're very interested. Mm. I mean, right now, as you can hear, it's like a madhouse. I've got cousins here. Um, they're running around up and down with my daughter up and down and they're always very interested. They always want to come to the farm. So I always have, especially my little cousins, they always want to come here. It's almost like I gave them this new world that they haven't been tapping into that makes, excites them. My family was very, very, very happy to support me um, because like I said, farming is not new to us. So mm. yeah, it's, it's been, I think youth are actually taking on the fact that farming is not for old people. Mm. Mm. How would you encourage youth? I mean, it's one thing to attract young people to the agri sector, right? And like you said, you know, within your short um, um, uh, span in this industry for now, you know, it's only been like from 2020 to 2022, you've experienced a lot of challenges and not everybody can really um, stand the fall, you know, especially when they're dealing with so many challenges at once, year in, year out, season after season. So it's one thing to attract youth, but how do we retain youth from your perspective, how do you think we can uh, retain youth to continue to stay in the agri sector over and above all these challenges that we'll face and maybe bring your history or your background into um, um, how you did it? You said you were faced with so many challenges. So why are you here? Why are you still standing? What's keeping you motivated still? Um, and, and you're still contributing to the sector over and above all these hardships that you've uh, experienced in the, in the past few years. So I think, I think how we actually, we can attract them, but how do we make them stay? Yeah. We make them stay by actually being honest as farmers. I think there's a lot of us that have already started this journey. People my age, I've, made, I've met some amazing female male farmers that are my age, even younger, that are doing great, amazing things. Mm -hmm. But I think what we need to start communicating as farmers is that we need to stop communicating 
our happy stories all the time. Yeah. And we need to start being realistic and laying things out, um, you know, as they happen and, and how we got over them as opposed to, I'm a person, because I've, I've even called a lot of people out, you know, on Twitter, right? To say, you know, I've seen people saying, I placed 5,000 chickens and I didn't experience a single mortality. Well, tell us how you did it, yeah. number one. <laughs> Don't just say, I followed all the steps. Tell us how you did it. Tell us why, you know, and then so that the farmer that experienced 10 or 20% of the mortalities knows how to recover from something like that. So I think mm. it's more being realistic. Let's stop selling dreams and making farming look easy, but make it look realistic that it is hard work. But mm. if you put in the hard work and you have tenacity and you can literally just stand the rain because, I mean, bad days don't last forever. You need to just mm. be able to adapt. I need to know how to move. You've got a mistake. I mean, I had coccidiosis, hit my chickens, and I lost 1,900 chickens. Now, for a person that just started a business, you can imagine how that hit me financially. I could have just closed shop. Mm. But then with something like that, I learned, I, I understood, okay, this is a mistake that we did. The guys were going in with boots, the same boots that they were using in the goat crow as well as in the chicken coops, and that you're not supposed to do that. And then, therefore, I started building my business up again, starting from small, as opposed to p placing a thousand chickens at once, I would do 500 in batches of 500 so that I can give them more attention. Uh, you know, it's, it's all about understanding that life is not easy. So mm. farming, farming is not easy, but you need to just adapt as you go. You need mm. to start communicating realistically that farming is possible, but it, you just must not go into it thinking there's no challenges. Because I feel like the moment a person experiences challenges, they close shop and then they've done, oh my God, I lost so much money in farming. But with any business, you lose money. With any business, you experience challenges. But it's how you get up from there. You know, what do you learn? What are your takeaways? And how are you going to make sure that those same mistakes don't keep happening? I'm yeah. not sure if I'm making things happen. No, you making... Bubble gum farmers on Twitter and saying, oh, farming is great, guys. Yeah. yeah. No, you, I, I think you're speaking 100% truth. Um, no shortcuts there, no lies there. And yes, you are making sense because I can definitely relate. I like the fact that be honest, be open, tell them of the hardships. Um, and even I think we have the responsibility, right? Um, us as farmers yeah. that are sharing our stories and our journeys on social media to also share the bad parts and the difficult parts and the parts that, want, that make us want to quit, you know? So my, my last question to you is, and I think it's quite a big one, you know? Um, do you think then having now uh, being, uh, well, going into the agriculture sector and farming now, do you think the agri-industry is an industry that could s possibly solve the unemployment crisis in South Africa? Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. First of all, agriculture doesn't get as much support as, as it should be getting, you know, from the powers that may be. You know, it's yeah. not like the chat for me. We need, because if you look at how many, I get so many agriculture, like every youth graduates that yeah. cannot be paid I would love to take all of them, but how do I afford them as a small scale farmer? So I think existing farmers need to be empowered to be able to empower more youth, if, if I'm making sense. To be able to take in already the people that are studying agriculture that are struggling to find jobs. And then there we can start looking at other faculties and, and the youth in general. Because, you know, we just need the resources, we need the support, we just need, you know, because most of us are already there, but out of pocket with my own ability as Noma, it will take me at least 10 years to be able to set up an academy, um, you know, where I have got, maybe I can take on 10 students or 20 mm. students a year. Um, to be able to get there, um, it's going to take me some time. But if we actually got the right backing and the right support as, as small to medium scale farmers, I believe that we could actually do something or something significant to the unemployment of this country. Not only just for youth in agriculture that have studied agriculture, there is so much that goes into agriculture, it's not even a joke. As my business grows bigger, I will need someone to do my books, those are people in finance, mm. to do in terms of instead of doing my books on you know a small little app and doing them myself i'll need an accountant and i'll need someone who's going to do all my brand branding and signage and that's again marketing there's so much there's packaging there is there's just so much to this value chain where we could employ more people outside of just people that study agriculture or a bsc in agriculture um yeah. but if we just employed the bread basket 
Yeah. No, Matema, thank you so much for your insights today. I thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. And I'm quite uh, happy to hear that, you know, you're very passionate, again, around employment, um, employing people, um, even uh, if, you know, you feel like you're not at the scale that you want to be at yet. Because in the beginning of the conversation, you said, I'm a small-scale farmer. But please do not underestimate the value that you're having uh, within the sector. The, the four or five people that you're creating employment for, that is big because in essence, you know, they possibly, it, it, you can't, you, with, with employing four or five people, you're possibly just feeding close to 20 people, you know, uh, and, and, and th that's just impact alone. So thank you so much for coming onto the podcast, sharing your story and just giving us some gems and really how we um, as, as farmers need to communicate truth around the sector challenges that young people may find, but also the opportunities exist because yet, I, I do agree with you, not everybody can be a farmer, but there's so many yeah. other innovative s areas in which young people can take advantage of within the agriculture sector to support farmers and also support the industry along the value chain. So I wish you the best of luck with your planting season that's coming up soon um, and uh, with, with raising your, 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 your livestock, your chickens. Um, yeah, let's, let's not be stranger to one another and I hope you're not going to be a stranger to the show. So when you are now a commercial farmer, <laughs> please let us know your growth, <laughs> share your journey. And uh, yeah, thank you for, for your time. Thank you so much, Mali. Thank you so much to you and your team. Again, thank you so much for your time and we'll speak soon. Absolutely. That was Noma Temba Sibanda, founder and CEO of NIS C Farms. She's based in Pretoria. And uh, we were unpacking the topic around youth unemployment in, uh, in South Africa. Is agriculture the sector that is going to solve youth unemployment in South Africa? And she really had a good st uh, standpoint there. Uh, but I believe you need to go back and watch this video, hear what she said and her viewpoints around how we can create employment within uh, the sector, um, solve the unemployment crisis and just grow the sector and empower youth who are already participating actively within the sector. If you enjoyed the show, please like, comment and most importantly, subscribe to the pri uh, pr private property farming podcast uh, and also send through your suggestions of what you would like to see what you would like to hear discussed on the podcast because this podcast is for you we're here to educate inspire and inform you around the trailblazers that are making this industry a phenomenal sector to work in thank you so much for watching take care